We have stories from our old people about the harvest of Dibera. Tunnerong people able to, to go into to caves and people could brush them off and, and capture them with incredible ease. The bogong moth, or Dibera in Tunnerong language, was once abundant during summers in Victoria's alpine region. This breathing wall as they sort of slowly, slowly move as they're, they're resting during the day. But after decades of slow decline, Around 2019, the moth's population plummeted by 99.5%. We're only kind of seeing very small amounts. More than 2,000 Australian species are listed as under threat. As scientists warn of an extinction crisis, passionate people across the country are doing what they can to stop Australia's unique wildlife from disappearing. Wawa Yumuga, Nyaranik Matchanks. I'm a Nyarabuluk man of the Tunnerong Nation. I work for my mob and I'm incredibly privileged to do so. We want to tell the story of Dibera, we want to tell the story of, uh, of other animals and other species. Dibera breed in low-lying areas, mainly in southeast Australia. But in spring, they migrate hundreds of kilometres to escape the summer heat and rest in the caves and boulder fields of alpine areas. They're also a vital food source for things like mountain pygmy possum and, and bats that you find in the high country. Research is yet to fully explain the moth's dramatic downturn, although climate change, drought and practices like crop spraying are likely to have played a part. The Dibera are really sensitive to heat. They're sensitive to, to wind and uh, predation and just encroachment on their habitat as well. To protect Dibera, we need to do a lot of things. We need to understand them better. Dibera is considered threatened internationally but limited data led to a recent Australian decision not to include it on the federal list. Tanaron Council tracked the moths that arrive in their country, a project that could form part of the solution. Really simply, we have buckets with a funnel inverted inside them. We have a, a light trap um, uh, set up above it and the, the moths are attracted to that light. They, they hit the light and they fall into the bucket. It's easy and it doesn't require training, which is great because we get young Tunnerong people out there really easily exploring these areas with, you know, it might be with elders or, or older people and knowledge holders. We try to avoid relying on remote sensing or non-human elements. We, we utilise all of that, absolutely. But we also walk in the footsteps of our old people. We're sensing and we're smelling and we're, we're feeling the, the freezing cold winds that come through and that's a really, really important part of connecting to country and understanding um, mother and, and our country. After set up, the crew camp nearby, counting and releasing the Dibera at first light before the harsh sun harms them. Earlier in the season, we were finding um, reasonable numbers, you know, one and two metre squared uh, of, of moth on the wall. Nothing here, nothing in there this morning. This time when we got up there, we didn't find any live moths, but there were quite a lot that had passed and that, that were on the ground. This kind of shows there's, there's evidence that they have been there this season, but there are other parts of the continent, other parts of Australia that monitoring programs need to be undertaken as well. Um, in their breeding grounds, um, you know, in their larval stages. Those areas are um, off Tunnerong country and in some cases a, a long way off Tunnerong country. That obviously brings some challenges, but it also brings some really interesting opportunities to, to think about these things across cultural landscapes. The cultural significance of Dibera is multifaceted. It's widely known that they were a food source, but that's not necessarily their only uh, significance. Other mobs would come to the to the high country and we would do a whole bunch of things, including um, Dibera ceremony, uh, harvest and, and consumption, but also things like uh, trade and resolving disputes and marriage and, and these sorts of things as well. And so, so Dibera would be a food source for that and they'd be a, a point of celebration, a point of discussion. Dibera aren't the only creature under threat of extinction on Tanarong country. And many of those are deeply linked and, and incredibly uh, significant and important to our dreaming stories, our creation stories. And that's not just a, a bedtime story. That, that tells us about who we are as humans on country. We can draw principles from that and apply it today and to, to non-Tunnerong people, to, to all people on, on Tunnerong country and elsewhere about the need to care about the plight of these animals, if they're around us every day or if they're a long way away or really difficult to, to hike up to, to, to see, they still play a role in our system.